Scott Clement came in. He's uh, Vice President of Digital Revenue for Sandusky Newspapers. And uh, Sandusky Newspapers has newspapers in several states, uh, as well as 31 websites and a digital marketing agency. Uh, and uh, Brett began his career in high-tech manufacturing business in Colorado for a tiny scoring company. In the mid-80s, his company began experimenting with the backbone of the internet, trying to host tiny events between universities. Uh, he moved into the media business in 2001 with Freedom Communications and later into a corporate role. Uh, he joined Sandusky in 2013 as Vice President of Digital for its North Tennessee Media Group. And he's in charge of digital revenue now for the entire group. So we are absolutely pleased and, and really excited to have Brett in here today. So if you can help me welcome Brett Jackson. Hear me okay? I hate using the microphones, and it's, it's better if we have a conversation. If you have questions, just you know, raise your hand because this is—it's difficult to uh, pull together something like this and, and, and everybody's needs. I'll be here for a few days. So if you have additional questions, or more, uh, I'm going to take some additional time. I'll be more happy to talk to you. But uh, I drove up yesterday from Eastern Tennessee, and in Eastern Tennessee, if it but if the forecast is snow, they cancel school. It doesn't matter if it's a half an inch or whatever, they'll cancel the schools. And if it snows on the ground, people will pull over, put their car in park and walk home. So it was interesting with that, driving in here yesterday with all of the accidents that I saw. In, uh, uh, and I am from Ohio originally, uh, so it brought back some old memories. So thank you for that. Uh, that those things have in common. And this is kind of an open question. Murphy Brown, um, Let's see, uh, Brian Adams hit, and I have to refresh my memory what that is. So, no, it was a different hit. It was um, everything you do, I do for love. 60 minutes. Uh, these are all things that were at the top of your game in what month and what year? Anybody want to throw out a date? Year. <laughs> 88, good guess. 91. Who said 91? You were right. You win a prize. <laughs> August of 91, that, those things were at the top of the chart. But also, that was the first internet website that was launched. 91. So I, in this group, there's probably most of you guys remember. Congratulations. <laughs> we'll meet with Dave for a um, But there, a lot of things have changed since 1991. The first website talked about the WWW, the World Wide Web, what it meant. That started in 89. They started to roll it out. It was called Mesh. It wasn't called the WWW. But there are a lot of things that have changed since then. Today, I want to kind of talk about nothing to do back then, but what was, what's going on today. So today, we're going to cover why do I need a website? There are people today who tell me, I don't need a website because I've got a Facebook page. That's all I need. Okay. What's a good website today? Not 1991. What's the Google factor? Why do I need to know about that? Why is it important? Why is there a need for a social connection? How do I drive traffic? I've got a website, but how do I drive traffic? Do I need to drive traffic? And how do I measure results? It's been out there for a long time. Is it working? I hope so. Spent money on it. My uncle's nephew's cousin brother built it for him back in 2005. So why do I need a website? Internet searches every day, 7 billion. There are 300 million people in the United States. 88.1% of those people use the internet. Those are big numbers. Your website's first impression. 89% of B2B customers will look at the website before making any purchasing decisions. They will also judge your company by the look of your website. Does it do what it, what it needs to? Am I engaged with it? Do I want to click that next click? And 94% are often design driven. You know, I, I've got a website, it looks okay, I think. But if you, you don't know who's going to the website, then you may want to take a deeper look. Why do I need a website? Because it's an asset of your company and it's the only thing that you can own that's online. Social sites are rented. Facebook is rented. If you don't own Facebook, Facebook can change the rules at any given time. And you have to live with that. And they do. 
most uh, Facebook posts that you put out there only reach between 10 and 15 percent of the people who you send it out to. Because they want to chunk it down, so you pay money for their boosted posts and their all that cool stuff that they do. Uh, it works for you 24 seven. If somebody happens not to be able to sleep like me last night at two o'clock, uh, it'll it'll work for you. People will be able to find you. It's a great way to find customers both inbound and outbound. You can reach out using your website. You can send things out. You can do emails. You can do things that bring people back in. <clears throat> and it helps your business branding, which is important when it comes to website design. Website branding is as important as the outside look of your business or the inside look of your business. If somebody comes into your business, it's got to look as good. You've got to be as proud of your website as you are of your business that you own. So what's a good website? And again, ask questions along the way. You know, my, my website looked really good two years ago. Why is it not? We can talk about that. But what makes a good website? The only way you know if it's a good website is, first of all, you have to understand who your audience is. Who do you want to reach? Because how you build a website better answers some specific questions to engage those people. If it's up there because you think it looks good, that's great. But if it's not working for you, it may not be the right thing. The design, what they call the UX, user experience. Is it great? Do people stay on your site long enough? Yes? Brad, how long do you have when someone hits your website before they say, I'm, I'm out of here? Less than seven seconds. That's a good question. People would say 30 seconds, and it's dropped to 15. The average attention span of somebody who goes online is the same as a nap. About seven seconds. <laughs> if you don't hit them first and early and hard, you're going to leave. Um, you have to make sure it's cross device compatibility. Cross device compatibility, compatibility means this the desktop, your tablets. You have to reach those people and capture them with all three. <clears throat> Most websites were built for the big desktops. And then when somebody goes online now, which 80% of the people, actually 90% of the people who will search your business will start. And if it doesn't look good here, do you think they're going to wait till they get home and then jump online and go back and take a look later? Probably not. Uh, the other thing is uh, relevant content. This is huge. This is hot. This is what, Facebook, uh, what uh, Google has done to change the game. Relevant content is the most important thing that they look for now. When you're looking at searches, when Google looks at your website, they want to make sure that you have relevant content that's related to your business, and all links and everything that you have as part of that bundle speaks to the fact that you are who you are. <laughs> so Google isn't a bunch of uh, people sitting in a basement someplace looking at everybody's website and saying, "Well, this one is a restaurant, and this one is a fuel home." They don't do that. They have what they call spy, uh, spiders and bots that crawl each and every website, and they look for text that speaks to what your website is about. So you have to make sure you build a website with enough text, and enough blogs, and enough stories, and enough content that represent your business <coughs> to what it's about. That's hot. What do you mean by a blog? Okay, so a blog is really a story <coughs> that you write. It's any content that you write about your business. And it should flow onto your website someplace. It's best if you flow it like a stream of content that you see with news sites. You'll see a story after story after story. Those can be considered blogs. If you're talking about your business specifically. It's a web blog is what it is, web blog. So that's hot. Put that in, in as a, this is a money piece I gotta remember because I've gotta write good content and I have to have links in that content that are relevant to the content that you're talking about. Google looks at that. That's very important for the search of your business. Of your <coughs> Searchability, that's hot too. Not just about the, the blogs, but it's also about how the website's built. If the website's not <laughs> built to be easily crawled by those non-humans, the spiders and the bots, they have a specific algorithm that they do and they crawl your site. And it used to be, and it's secret now, but it used to be it started in the left-hand corner of your website. It would do a diagonal down to the right rail Go straight across the middle of your content and drag down to the bottom so it can see your footer. <laughs> but they've changed all that. And it changes every three to six weeks. <laughs> Google does that for protection and to develop those. 
Um, speed and functionality. If your site takes a long time to load, they're gone seven seconds. If it's more than seven or eight seconds, it's probably left. So there's two reasons that that happens, that the speed can be affected. Big images or videos on your front page can take a while to load. But also the hosting, whoever hosts your, your uh, website can affect that too. So those are things that you can take a look at. Compliance and accessibility, that's another one that's new and, and hot. ADA, compliance is important. There are more lawsuits today about businesses not being able to be searched by people who are visually impaired that are causing people to take a second look. So not that you have to run and go, oh my gosh, I gotta change everything. But keep it in mind because it is important now. And there are more rules about how that needs to work. And it's not that difficult. It depends on how big your website is and the complexity of it, but there are things that you can do to make sure that it can be easily searched by uh, people who need that kind of help. Security. If I had a dollar every time somebody said, my site got hacked, <coughs> I wouldn't be talking here today. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a big, real deal. People's websites get taken over all the time. They get held hostage. If somebody has access to your back end of your website, they get your website hostage. Schools and universities get that a lot. So somebody from another country will come in and take the back end of the website, lock it out, and I've seen people pay twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars to get that a month. And the main thing, it's got to deliver results. Your website's got to work for you. Or why have it? Unless it's a vanity thing. And the way you measure that is analytics. Does everybody know what Google Analytics, what do you have it on your site? Anybody not know what I'm talking about? You don't have to raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> analytics are important. If you don't measure your site and you don't see how it's working for you, you don't know where people are going. The analytics, these kind of analytics can tell you where people spend time on your site. What's working? What needs to be changed? What where people don't go? So you can look at those kind of things and really make some good decisions about your website. 